The topic of today's video is Lindy rigging, or live bait rigging, or just rigging, whatever you wanna call it, that's what we're talking about today. I'm gonna to teach you everything you need to know to catch walleyes rigging during the summer months, so let's jump right in. Now, I know some of you probably clicked on this video because you wanna see some fish catch in action, and we are gonna to get to some fish catch in action later in this video, but first things first, some of you probably wanna know a little bit about the componentry of the whole rig. So I'm gonna run through that first and foremost real quick. First up, we got the rod. The rod is actually a sneaky important part of this whole uh, mix because if you have a really short rod, I think you're really playing at a disadvantage. So what I like personally, I like a seven and a half, even an eight foot rod, but realistically anything over seven foot is gonna be serviceable for live bait rigging. And the reason why you want an extra long rod for this particular application is the fact that you want as much length as possible when you're reeling down on the fish and eventually setting the hook. So if you don't know yet already, when you're rigging, you're holding the line in your finger like this and you're opening the bail. And when a fish bites it, you're gonna feel it. When a fish bites it, you let go, the fish is gonna take that bait, it's gonna swim away, and then it's gonna take it into its mouth. And once you're ready to set the hook, you wanna reel down, and then once it's, start, once it's tight, I like to just reel a little bit faster and do sort of a sweeping hook set. But basically, that's why you want a long rod. On the reel side of things, I don't think it makes a huge difference as long as you have something that has a decent drag in case you hook up with a big fish, but right here I just have a 2000 size reel. I think anywhere from 2000 to 3000 is plenty, but this isn't really a tactic where the reel matters a ton. Now, on the line side of things, I am a personally am a big believer in using braid for this presentation, and the reason why is because I like the added feel and the no stretch capability because oftentimes when I'm rigging during the summer months, I'm fishing in deep water and you know whether I'm fishing over rocks, rocks are a little bit easier to feel but if you're fishing over mud, that added sensitivity of braid helps you feel the bottom when you're trying to keep that weight just a little bit off bottom throughout your entire presentation. Now, speaking of the weight, I'll get it down right here. So there's a lot of different things you can do on the weight side of things. As you can see right here, I just have a simple bullet weight rigged up and this is just a no frills strategy for this particular presentation, but today I'm actually out fishing on main lake mud. So having something that's not gonna snag up is not as big of a concern. If you happen to be fishing uh, around rocks or boulders, you might want something that kind of hangs down low, sort of like a no slip sinker, or kind of uh, the roach sinker from Northland is another option, but a bullet weight will work fine for me right now. And I'm fishing anywhere from about 23 to 32 feet of water. And I've been using a half ouncer and it's been working real good. You know, if you're fishing up closer to like high teens, you can probably get away with a quarter ouncer. And uh, if you're fishing deeper, you're gonna wanna upsize a little bit too. And it also matters as well what bait you're running. So I'm running leeches today. So leeches don't create a ton of drag, but if you're fishing big, bigger minnows, you're gonna wanna upsize to a bigger weight, but I'm using a half half ouncer and I have a bead underneath it, if I could, it's kind of stuck up in there, there it is. I just have a bead right there. This one happens to be gold, but obviously color doesn't matter. And the whole point of the bead is that I'm protecting the knot that's tied to the swivel right here. So right there is the swivel, that is a number eight swivel. And once again, I don't know that the size of the swivel really makes a huge difference, but that's what I run. It's kind of a good universal walleye size. What I have just below the swivel is eight pound fluorocarbon. And to me, eight pound is a good all around weight when you're chasing walleyes. I feel extremely confident with eight pound, even when I'm fighting really big, like 30 inch fish, 10 pound fish. I would have no problem landing it with eight pound line. If you're fishing somewhere where the water's a little bit dirtier and you know you're gonna be hooking up with some big fish, you might you may wanna upsize to 10, but I would actually argue if you're gonna go off of eight, I would actually almost go the other way and go to six or seven, six or seven pounds. So how I have this tied up is I like to use a Palomar knot and if you 
don't use a Palomar knot and you just use more traditional fisherman knots, I think that you're missing out because the Palomar knot's just a lot stronger. So I have a Palomar knot from the braid to the swivel and from the swivel to the fluorocarbon. Now speaking of fluorocarbon, one thing, just bump the camera, one thing that's worth noting is I am running about nine feet of fluorocarbon from my swivel. So from the swivel all the way to the hook, I have about nine feet. Now a lot of people will run their, their leads about six feet or if it's dirty water, you can run it even less, three or four. But when you're fishing clear bodies of water, especially bodies of water that are pressured like the ones, the one I am on today, um, I just think it really pays to have an extra, extra long leader. When you're having problems getting bit with this presentation, to me there's two things you can do to make it a little bit more finesse. You can downsize this fluorocarbon. And when I say downsize, I mean like go from like an eight pound to a six pound, or you can do a longer leader. So those are the two things that I'm primarily doing. Um, and then down here on the business end of things, I just have a simple number two octopus style hook. And uh, yeah, that's just a good universal all around live bait catcher uh, for walleyes. It's getting a little crusty now, as you can probably see, but I have a leech down here at the end. Here, I'll, I'll give him a dip. There. Now he's a little more squirmy. But anyhow, I got a leech down at the end. And the whole theory with leeches specifically is the bigger, the better. So if you can get big jumbo leeches, if the bait shop you're going to has them, you are definitely going to want to go in that direction as opposed to smaller ones. Save the smaller ones for when you're out with uh, your family chasing panfish. As far as hooking goes, when you're rigging specifically, I like to hook it just below the sucker as straight as humanly possible because if it's not right in the middle, that leech is going to spin in circles as you're dragging it across the bottom and eventually it's going to get all twisted up. and. You know when you have those ribbons on, on like a birthday present or a Christmas present and then they take the scissor and they go zzzz, and then they curl it up? That was a terrible description, but that's what's going to happen to your leech. You know, if you happen to be bobber fishing, I know some people like to hook leeches wacky style, but all in all, you can't go wrong if you're hooking them right by the sucker. So that's kind of a really quick run through from the rod, reel, line, some of the weight components and uh, yeah, the business end of things. So now we're gonna hop on to the next topic. All right, now we're gonna run through how you fish a live bait rig, a Lindy rig. And the nice thing about this particular presentation is it is extremely easy to execute. So basically what you do, I'll reel up here. What you do is you take it, drop it in the water, make sure it's not tangled up or anything. Let it go on a slack line here till it falls all the way down to the bottom. Just like that, once it hits the bottom, you'll see the line will obviously quit going down. You reel up just a tiny bit. I would say roughly what you wanna do is you wanna get it about a foot off the bottom. And then you open your bail, or you take your finger, grab the line, open your bail, and then you hold on to it and wait for a bite. It's pretty simple. now. One misconception is that some people like to think, oh, I have a weight on there. Obviously you want the weight on the bottom and no, that is definitely not the case. So when you're rigging like this, you actually want the weight as close to the bottom as you can without hitting it. And I would actually argue that you want the bait like about a foot or so off the bottom, maybe a foot and a half, somewhere in that range. And the reason why is a lot of people forget about the fact that fluorocarbon sinks. So when you're using something as light as a leech, that fluorocarbon is actually going to pull that leech and the hook down into the bottom. So if you're fishing mud, your whole rig is going to get all muddy. Or if you're fishing rocks, you're going to get snagged up. So I actually tend to run my rigs a little bit higher off the bottom, somewhere in that one to two foot range. And that tends to work good for me because eventually that leech and that hook and the fluorocarbon line is going to sink it down pretty darn close to the bottom. So this is a really, really simple and super easy tactic to do when the boat is in sitting in one place. It gets a little bit more difficult when you're moving around and going up and down structure and moving along flats. 
And ultimately, that's where this presentation really shines is when you're kind of drifting around, moving slowly. I like to go right in that like 0.5 mile an hour range. Now when you're moving around like this, the one thing that you're gonna wanna do is pay attention to the angle of your line. And when straight up and down, you have a pretty good idea where that sinker is, just a foot off the bottom where you set it. But if it's closer to a 45 degree angle, what that means is you're gonna have to put out a little bit more line and it just depends on how fast you're going. If you're going like 0.5 to 0.8 or even one mile an hour, you may wanna put an extra two or three feet of line out so that you can uh, compensate for the fact that your sinker has slid back a little bit farther. Now another thing to pay attention to obviously is gonna be the depth that you're in. So if you're in about 28 feet of water and you're kind of cruising around in that depth range, then you move up on top of the structure, obviously you're gonna to wanna to reel up a little bit because you don't want that weight to be pulling along the bottom, whether you're fishing mud, you're gonna be dredging mud up everywhere, or if you're fishing rocks, you might get snagged up. So depth is another important factor to pay attention to in addition to the angle of your line. So I think the next logical question to ask is, when do you bust out the live bait rig or the Lindy rig, whatever you wanna call it? And honestly, when I am considering this particular tactic, I am generally weighing it against a spinner rig, a jig, or a jig and wrap or puppet minnow type bait. And what I'm looking for when I'm live bait rigging is how active do those fish look on my electronics. So if they're real close to the bottom, that's when I know that they're gonna want something that's a little bit slower, a little bit more finesse, a little bit more natural. Those are all characteristics of the live bait rig. And uh, what that means is that I can find these marks and I can sit on top of them and wait for them to bite. Now, if the fish are a little bit higher off the bottom and they're scattered all around, then to me, that says I can use something a little bit more aggressive and fast and something that I can cover water with, whether that's the uh, spinner rig or like, like I said before, a jig and wrap. But on days like this, where it's high pressure, blue skies, middle of summer, that's when the live bait rig really shines because you can hang that leech right in the fish's face, give them plenty of time to look at it, plenty of time to bite it. If you're moving too fast, then that bait is gonna be zipping past the walleye's face before they even get a chance to grab it because they might be a little bit more lethargic. Now another important factor when you're trying to decide if you're gonna bust out the Lindy rig is the size of the spot that you're fishing. Now if, this is, if you're trying to fish a really big area and you wanna cover all of it, the live bait rig is not gonna be the rig of choice because you just can't fish it super quickly. Now, if it's a smaller area, maybe it is an isolated hump or it's an inside corner on structure or a point that you just kinda wanna mosey around and look around and just kinda set up camp in an area, that's when this presentation really shines. You know, another good spot is outside weed lines when you know that it's a high percentage area and you just wanna dangle the juice right in front of the walleye's face. That's when this presentation is really awesome. It's really more of a mosey around kind of presentation where you're just kind of crawling through the area versus a spinner rig where you're zipping baits through the area covering water. So a common question people ask when they're rigging is how long do you let them eat it? And personally for me, usually less is better because the longer you let them eat it, the better chance you have of gut hooking the fish. And that's not great if you're gonna be releasing the fish. If you're gonna be harvesting, I'm kind of of the mindset that you can let them eat a little bit longer, um, but there's always a chance that you end up hooking something that's really big. With leeches, I like to only wait maybe three seconds or so. And yes, you might pull the bait out of their mouth sometimes, but at least you're not killing as many fish. Now with crawlers, I like to wait closer to five to eight seconds, but it also depends on the mood of the fish on that particular day. You know, when I'm fishing, like my first couple bites, I'll probably wait a little bit shorter, maybe just a few seconds, because you can kind of read the mood of the fish. So if the first couple fish have it in their mouth after just a couple seconds, then you know that they're probably a little bit more active on that particular day, so you don't have to give it to them as long. But uh, if you miss the first couple fish after only waiting a few seconds, then you're gonna wanna obviously 
adjust because maybe they're not quite as snappy. So keep that in mind. Minnows, you can't forget about minnows. Minnows, I will wait a little bit longer, but my general rule of thumb for minnows is the bigger the minnow, the longer I wait. So if you have like a big sucker or a big red tail, you're gonna wanna wait quite a bit longer than a little tiny juicy leech. So, or I should say, a juicy jumbo leech because that's what we tend to we tend to prefer. Now one area where I think people get a little bit too cute is with the weight that they're using. So I mentioned earlier that I'm using about a half ounce weight right now and I'm fishing kind of in you know the mid to high 20s and I think that some people try to get a little bit too cute with it and they go with lighter weights you know maybe an eighth or a 16th even I've even heard people say um, and I just don't see the benefit to that. Ultimately, if you have like a long snell, a big long leader, then it's not gonna make that much of a difference how heavy your weight is. What's more important is the fact that, the fact that your bait is actually in the zone. So the heavier the weight you have, the more control you're gonna have. So I'm not saying strap on like a big one ounce weight, but if you're gonna be fishing mostly vertically, you're gonna wanna have as good a control of that bait as humanly possible and if it's really rolling out here like today it's not terrible there's a little bit of wind you're probably hearing it a little bit in the microphone but it's not a terrible day today earlier it was actually worse there was the wind was a lot worse but when the wind is really nasty or if you're moving around a lot you know i would recommend just putting on a heavier weight you know and if you have a bullet sinker like i have you know you might have to cut the line and add another weight depending on you know how light you started the day out but another good option too is uh, I know that some manufacturers make weights that actually clip on so you can adjust on the go. So that's, an, that's a good system that you can use too. I don't have one of those on my line right now, but that's just something to keep in mind. Don't go too light with the weights because what's most important is making sure that you're keeping your bait in the strike zone. And if you're getting blown around a lot, you know, your weight, if you're using something real light, you know, your weight could be flapping way up in the water column. And if you're doing that, you know, your bait's gonna be way too high, especially if those fish are holding really tight to bottom. So I'm just gonna give you a quick run through of how I caught my fish today. So basically, when I showed up in the morning, it was kind of late morning when I ended up getting out in the water. I just went to a number of different smaller points and I just checked to see if there was any signs of life. These are areas that I would consider to be fairly high percentage areas. And so I'd pull up to them and I would look around on my 2D sonar and my side imaging to see how many fish were in the area. And if there were plenty of fish around, I would actually fish it. So I dropped my trolling motor and I would drop my bait down, get it all set up like we talked about. And then I would just drive my trolling motor around with my remote here. And basically what I would do is I'd mosey up and down the structure and you know, I'd sit up on top of the structure for a little bit, look around, and then I would kind of go off the side of it, and then I would kind of run down, run down the, uh, the side of the break and just see how many fish I was seeing on my electronics while I was fishing these areas. And eventually you get a good feel for how, where the fish are setting up on this particular structure. So what I ended up finding is that I was seeing more fish up on top, especially when the wind was blowing. And then as you can see, it's not too crazy. It's not super wavy out here, but uh, that's because the wind has died down a little bit. And when it did, I noticed the fish were actually sitting more directly on the structure. So I would focus my efforts more in that area, but I ended up finding the fish because I was just kind of moseying around, just kind of crawling up and down the structure, just looking, paying attention to my graph, obviously paying attention to where you're getting bit because sometimes you'll find that there might be a bunch of fish you know, on the structure, right on the break, but maybe they're not as bitey as the ones on top or vice versa. So you gotta pay attention to, you know, all the different factors out there. But the first spot I pulled up to, I was actually marking a lot of fish, but I didn't get any bites on that first spot. So I ended up pulling up the trolling motor, going to the next spot, and I ended up catching a fish right away. Eventually, I ended up sticking a number of other fish, and that was just kind of doing the exact same thing I talked about. So don't be afraid to move if you're if you happen to be marking a lot of fish don't be afraid to move to another spot because that helped me out today um, but before you move spots if you are seeing a lot of fish try changing your presentation before you before you go and try and find more fish all right well that about wraps things up hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you learned something if you have any other questions leave them down in the comment section below and i will do my best to answer them 
I like to reply to every single comment. So if you leave something down there, I promise you, I will see it, I will look at it, and I will almost certainly reply to it. I also wanna thank you for watching all the way to the end. I really do truly appreciate it. And uh, if you enjoyed this video and you learned something, make sure to hit that little red subscribe button down below because I have more good content coming this summer, this fall, and I also have some big plans for winter. So that's your tiny little teaser. But uh, I appreciate you watching and I will see you next time.